Throughout the day here at the summit, we've been collecting questions from the attendees, the questions they have about running their business, and now we have our panel here to answer some of those questions. Reva Lisonsky is one of our regular panelists and the founder and CEO of Grow Biz Media, and Alexa Von Tobel is the founder of LearnVest, the leading personal finance and lifestyle website for women. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Okay, the first question comes from Annette. If you have a dynamite branding story, but the company does not have strong enough distribution, do you resist the temptation to go out with your story about a first and only? This is tricky. When you start a company, you're excited to get it out there, but if people can't buy your product or service, do you wait until you have distribution? Well, I, I think it's a combination. I think you, a lot of people spend too much money on branding up front and have nobody to sell that brand to, so it's a lot of wasted money. But I think also if you spend a little bit on branding, it's going to help you get more distribution because more people are going to hear about you and go, oh, I want part of that. So it's the balance of not throwing it all in too quickly because what if people, you know, it's the thing about disappointing people, like mail order, everybody orders it and they get the thing about, oh, okay, we don't have enough and they'll never order it again. And, and the thing about distribution is you can always have a website, right, that people can go to. That's right. I would actually take it a little bit differently and say that if you have a fantastic branding strategy and your distribution isn't ready to go, you are not leaving the office. Distribution is everything. It is so critical to make sure that your customer has a fantastic user experience, they get products on time, they get them in the right places, that you don't run out. And so I think it's really important that you really hone in on your distribution strategy, how you're going to literally sell your products to your customers. And then branding, also important then it's time to really focus on the branding strategy. So I would focus first on distribution and then really hone in on branding. All right, let's move on to the next question. This is about social media and marketing. If you think there's such thing as too much involvement in social media without annoying your customers, is there a point where there is you have to be really careful because there are so many networks out there and so today I think the problem is a lot of people automate their social media feed and so you're not even aware of how much you're bombarding your customer how do you gauge whether you're doing too much or too yeah. little so I would add to that that the, you can't sell on Twitter it's really important Twitter is a place where people go to consume content to learn, so it's really important that you're actually sharing really, really good content with your customers. It shouldn't be a, hey, we're in the press today, here's what we're doing, here's discounts. It really needs to be the important content, things that they want to learn about, things that they want to read about. We're a personal finance site, so we're making sure that our customers on Twitter are really up to speed with everything that's happening in personal finance and how it can affect them or discounts that they so, should know so about. So how do you happening. decide how often to do it? How do you know when it's too much or, or not yeah, enough? I recommend uh, you tweet anywhere from call it 15 to 20 times a day, starting at about 7 o'clock in the morning and ending about 9 o'clock at night. Okay, finally, a question about working with corporate clients. So how do I get the corporate communications departments of these consumer goods companies to allow us to issue a press release saying that we're getting new business from them? So if you're working with a corporate client, it might be a big deal for you, a smaller deal for them. So how do you get them excited about releasing something? Sure. So I've actually learned something that's totally the opposite, which is instead of trying to get the big companies to issue a press release, often LearnVest will issue a press release. And I think, you know, it's particularly given what's happening in new startups and media, the media is often interested in what the younger companies are doing with the big companies. So maybe I would stop stressing out so much about trying to get them to release something and really focus on your own PR strategy about you releasing something and you properly messaging. So then here Here's the, here's the other side of that question then, which is how do you get them to approve it fast enough? So that's, I mean, that takes time. And I think if you, I always start everything when we work with big companies months in advance so that we have the time so that I'm not up until the hour trying to get them to approve something. So we'll, we would get it approved weeks before. I think, you know, it's what we always learn about targeting as high up in the organization as you can go. In this case, I would target as low down in that department of someone who either has uh, the, the the right to say yes or has the, the path to the person who will. And if you engage with them, make them feel important, make them feel invested in the whole operation, they will run that mile for you, get that approval, and you're not going to bother people who don't really care. High up, they don't care. Right. All right. Well, Alexa and Reva, you guys, thank you so much for answering all these questions. Enjoy the rest of the day at the summit. Thank, thank you, you so much.